Our starting point this morning is day two of John Edwards' criminal trial. It's going to get underway in just about two and a half hours. And back on the stand, his former aide, Andrew Young, he was the key witness for the prosecution. The, uh, the issue is, did John Edwards inappropriately use campaign funds to hide his mistress, Rail Hunter, from the, uh, the prosecution, called Edwards a master manipulator, saying this, if the affair went public, it would destroy his chance of becoming president, and he knew it, and he made a choice to break the law. We're joined this morning by uh, Melanie Sloan. She's the executive director of Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Nice to see you, Melanie. Thanks for talking with us. Oh, nice to be here. Thank you very much. Walk me through what happened. Andrew Young is going to be back on the stand, as I mentioned again today, but yesterday was his first time on the stand. How'd that go? Uh, I think it went fine for him. Uh, he's had an easy time so far. He's the prosecution's main witness, and he's probably going to be on the stand for a couple days walking the jury through his relationship with John Edwards from beginning to end. Uh, they tried to hammer away uh, at his credibility, I thought, a lot yesterday while he was on the stand. What do you think about that? Well, uh, clearly he has a lot of credibility problems. He's got an immunity agreement with the prosecution. That's why he's testifying, to prevent himself from being charged with anything. Uh, he's already written a book that goes through his relationship with John Edwards. Uh, he lied uh, himself to say that he was the father of Riel Hunter's baby. So there are a lot of problems with Andrew Young. He's not a, a perfect witness by any stretch of the imagination. So it's clear that Abby Lowell, the defense lawyer, will be uh, attacking him uh, throughout. And that's going to be the defense main strategy. Strategy, they're going to have to undermine Andrew Young's credibility, and he starts as a, as a difficult witness. Yeah, I thought the whole thing looks like it's going to come down to sort of liar, liar, pants on fire for everybody. I mean, uh, Andrew Young, certainly John Edwards, there's, there's not a lot of credibility between the two of them. There was also conversation about whether or not Elizabeth Edwards knew what was going on. How could that play a role in this case? That could play quite a serious role in this case because uh, John Edwards' main defense is that he was hiding the affair from his wife, not just from the American people. It wasn't all a, cam a, a campaign tactic. It was about keeping the affair from his wife, which people can really understand because most people who have affairs are trying to hide them from his family. But if it turns out Elizabeth Edwards did indeed know about the affair much earlier than is currently believed, that could make it more difficult for Edwards to say that he wasn't really trying to hide it uh, from the American people. It wasn't a campaign tactic. And that's really what this case boils down to. Was this, were the expenditures made to support Riel Hunter, were those campaign contributions or were those gifts from friends to help hide the affair from Elizabeth Edwards? Okay. Melanie, how do they do that? That seems like an impossible thing to parse, this 900000 dollars donated over to Riel Hunter. How do you parse whether or not that was done to avoid humiliation or to continue his presidential campaign? Right. Well, that's a very difficult, uh, your point is perfect, and that is why it's going to be such a tough case for the prosecution. Remember, this is really an unprecedented case. There has never before been a prosecution on facts remotely like this, where gifts to third parties are considered campaign contributions. So I think the prosecution has an uphill battle, and I think they're really relying on the fact that the jury will just hate John Edwards for his despicable conduct. Hmm. Listen, um, Richard Lowry of the National Review had this article, which I think was in the, the Post this morning, and it said, you know, if, in fact, that money, that $900,000 plus, was considered to be a campaign expense, then would it have to be listed as a, uh, you know, a, a line item, ultimately, right? I mean, that's what it would have to come down to, you know, love child, uh, line number 18, and, you know, now the fax paper, line number 17. Uh, isn't that, doesn't he have a point there? He, he does have a point. It is, in fact, ridiculous because not only would the gifts from uh, Fred Barron and Bunny Mellon, who are the contributors at issue here, have to have been listed as campaign contributions, but if Mr. Edwards had supported Riel Hunter himself, if he had put out money to support her, that too would have had to be listed as a campaign contribution. Uh, and, and that's ridiculous. Also because in current campaign finance law, candidates are prohibited from using campaign funds for personal use. So you're not allowed to use the money for, say, gym membership or a, a haircut. But this is, is saying that you should, in fact, call it a campaign contribution if you're supporting your mistress. This could cause all sorts of politicians problems, really. <laughs> Melanie, I have two questions. One, considering that uh, we're hearing terms like witch hunt bandied about all over the place, considering that Andrew Young's credibility is not exactly stellar, are you beginning to witness a backlash to this backlash against John Edwards? And also, uh, couldn't you make the argument that since damage control is an expense that all campaigns have to go through, any expenses he sent towards his mistress and child were legitimate campaign expenses. Missed damage control is what he's saying. Yeah, yes. 
Right. Um, well, I, certainly, I, I don't believe that expenditures made to support somebody's mistress could possibly be campaign contributions. And I don't think there are any campaign finance lawyers out there who actually do think these are legitimate campaign expenses. I think this is a, a troubling case from, for most people. The thing is, everybody also hates John Edwards. It's really <laughs> hard to behave more despicably than cheating on your cancer-stricken wife and lying on national television about a baby and saying it's not yours and, and saying it's a campaign aid. So I, I think the prosecution has really relied all along on how horrible John Edwards behaved. But in the United States, we prosecute conduct, not character. Mm. People have said this case will go somewhere between two weeks and six weeks, so we will wait and see. Melanie Sloan for us this morning. Nice to see you, Melanie. Thank you. Thanks.